it seems impossible that cro Magnon man could have anything to do with the procession of the equinoxes and a clock like that. So, so yeah, what about the other 7,000 years before that? Before that, just wandering, wandering around, you know, um, hiding from animals, um, sharpening sticks. Things remain pretty much unchanged for that entire time. When we get to 40,000 years ago, we start seeing among Neanderthal man, we start seeing the beginning of religion. Uh, they took bear, uh, bear skulls and would bury bodies and place bear skulls near the body. Um, they would fold the body up in a fetal position. They would put flowers on the body. And uh, those were indications of some kind, of some kind of inkling of, of something religious. Some ritual. Something. But it wasn't full-blown until cro Man. man. So, let me just play, let me play a, um, play a movie here with Joseph Campbell. We're not going to be seeing too many movies, actually, but this is a good one, something for us to think about. We go now back to Lascaux. We go down into the crypt, uh, a, a lower uh, chamber, and this famous image appears. This definitely is a shaman. He's got the masked head of a bird on his uh, baton de commandement. He, we have a, a bird form. Here is the erect phallus, the negative phallus, the pointing stick. And by miracle, a lance has struck through the animal master here, which is a bison, and opened up his guts exactly as the pointing stick would have worked. This particular figure has, of course, has brought about a great deal of discussion. Some of the uh, writers have suggested it represents a hunting accident. That is ridiculous. Uh, well, what we know about uh, magic would indicate that if a hunting accident were depicted in the most sacred place of a sacred cave, it would produce hunting accidents by sympathetic magic. What it certainly represents is the bison, the principal animal of the hunt is the principal animal master. The bison invoked in the name of the covenant, animals giving their life willingly uh, through the power of the shaman and thus killed. That's the best explanation I can find. Okay, that's the best explanation he can find. Now take a look at this for a second. This is what he was talking about. Now here's the thing. Mythologists are going to interpret the world mythologically. Astronomers are going to interpret the world astronomically. Okay. Everyone's going to interpret the world according to the lenses that they wear. He says this is the bird-headed shaman. The penis here is the pointing stick. This is the totem of something you said, but it's like a, a, a scepter, uh, a totemic scepter. Here's the bison, here's his guts, and here's some kind of spear. And he said, that's the best that I can figure out. Okay, let's assume that's true. I'm going to go ahead and set this. You see this here? This is from Egypt. This is the god Horus, hawk-headed. This is the Little Dipper. Little Dipper was a leg. They saw this Little Dipper as a leg of a bull. This is the Big Dipper. They saw it as a hippopotamus. Here, of course, holds a spear. Now, remember when we saw that a knight with a lance pointing it at the dragon was actually the North Pole pointing at the constellation Draco? That the lance is the North Pole. That's why it's always something long and pointy. The North Pole is in the Little Dipper today. Polaris is in the Little Dipper. Here's the North Pole. <clears throat> Here's Horus. Who is Horus? The son of Osiris. Osiris, the resurrected god. Horus, basically the savior. Well, we saw what Joseph Campbell's interpretation was, right? His was a mythological interpretation. Okay, here's 
Here's the original. There's the hawk-headed shaman. He said this was a shaman. There's the spear, which was the North Pole in, in Horus. Horus holding the North Pole. Here's the bull, which is the little dipper. Now, is it possible that Egyptian astronomy can somehow be connected with Cro-Magnon paintings? This is 500,000 BC. This is what the Little Dipper looked like. The stars are constantly moving. So the way we see them today is not necessarily the way that it was seen, say, 25,000 years ago. They started to move into this familiar Little Dipper uh, position, and the Egyptians saw this as the leg of a bull. This is what it looks like today. We call this a little dipper. Is it possible that cro magnon man had some connection with astronomy? Well, let's see. This is from a shelf in uh, France called Lozelle. And it's a very important and suggestive figure. This little Venus of Lozelle is holding in her hand, in her right hand, elevated a bison horn with 13 vertical strokes. That's the number of nights between the first crescent and the full moon. The other hand is on the belly. What is suggested, we don't have any words of writing from this period, what is suggested is a recognition of the equivalence of the menstrual and the lunar cycles. This would be the first inkling we have of a, of a recognition of counterparts it, between the celestial and earthly uh, rhythms of life. Now, there's a man, Alexander Marshak, has uh, published a formidable volume called The Roots of Civilization, uh, where he deals with a number of staves or staffs of this kind, which are notched. And he has studied a number of these with a microscope and finds that the notches were not made by the same instrument at the same time on any one piece. And he says these are probably time factor counts. Counts, many of them uh, suggesting very strongly counts of the lunar cycle. So maybe out of women's concern for this rhythm that they will have recognized in their own bodies, uh, that we come to mathematical and even astronomical reckoning. Sounds logical. <clears throat> She's holding her stomach. I don't know what happened there, but let's just... Here we go. She's holding her stomach, and she's holding something here that measures time. As he said, measuring the nights between the uh, new moon and the full moon. Could this possibly be? Let's think back to the first prophecy in the Bible about the Savior. First prophecy in the Bible Which one? was the seed of the woman. We had a promise that a woman would bear a child and that that child would be the savior and that the child would crush the serpent's head and the serpent would bite the child's heel. What if that Venus of Lasso, holding her stomach, saying, I'm pregnant, I'm giving birth, holding the bison with the notches, and in the course of time, by the precession of the equinoxes, the savior will be born. First prophecy, maybe made in cro times. Is that possible? It's possible a prophecy like that could be made 26,000 years ago? Seems incredible. Seems impossible. <laughs>